For the giants of the gridiron, Sunday is a solemn occasion with no time for comedy. They believe that pro football is not a laughing matter. NFL Films believes otherwise. Richard, what are you doing? What they're doing is adding a few sour notes to a sport that's usually played with classical precision. They're also proving that while football is a game of blood and thunder, it is also a game of thud and blunder. For 20 years, NFL Films has presented the human drama of pro football, but it has also captured the human folly. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. NFL Films has produced five screen classics that have highlighted the lowlights of pro football. Now, together again for the first time, we present a collection of the best and most bizarre business from those five fabulous Follies films. Plus some brand new bloopers from our fantastic file of foul-ups. It's all in one big explosive package. It's all in Best of the Football Follies. Hello, I'm Steve Sable, and here in the NFL Films Library is the history of pro football. These cans contain the raw material for the films that we've been producing for the last two decades. While we're proud that we've helped create the myth of a great sport, we've also been concerned with the mirth. So we've depicted pro football as not only a game with plenty of oomph, but plenty of oops. When Johnny Carson started showing our football foul-ups on The Tonight Show back in the late 1960s, the enthusiastic response led us to produce the first sports film ever that was entirely devoted to bloopers and blunders, and we called it the Fabulous Football Funnies. That film and the four subsequent Follies films that came after it are among the most popular we've ever made. For the next hour, you're going to see some of the more memorable sequences and shots from our Folly series, plus some fresh material from the last two NFL seasons. And we think you'll agree that just as the greatest plays in NFL history always send chills up the spine, the game's greatest goofs will always tickle the funny bone. Something evil is lurking out there. Something to make you feel the cold breath of horror on the back of your neck. Something to chill your spine. It is stalking the stadiums, seeking out victims to satisfy its unquenchable thirst for blood. And heaven help those who gaze at the thing that rained hell on opening day. <laughs> On opening day, you'll experience creeping terror when a depraved, malignant force takes possession of Sunday's heroes and transforms them into predatory fiends. Their prey are the men who wear the black and white stripes. At first, the officials are taunted. The refs try to fight back. But these beasts crave human flesh. You screamed on Halloween. You shrieked on Friday the 13th. Now prepare to gag on opening day. This motion picture contains scenes that may be too intense for young people.
NFL Films challenges you to solve the mystery that baffled Scotland Yard. The stomach-churning suspense begins with a phone call. Is that our phone? Is that us? Hello, Danny? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I would like a, a large pizza with uh, everything on it but anchovies. <laughs> you got that? Hold the anchovies. <laughs> Dial M for Moron puts you on the lookout for the crime wave that blows the lid off the NFL. Hold on to your hats as helmets disappear. Grab onto your socks as cleats vanish. Not even jerseys are safe in this searing drama of a half-naked city paralyzed by fear. And when the pigskin starts popping loose, so will your eyes. Who done it? You won't know until the final fade out. And theater owners have been asked not to admit anyone during the last 15 minutes. This is the film that takes you behind today's hottest headlines. See how undercover informants provide police with the tips that lead to the biggest dragnet in FBI history. So when the phone rings, get ready for a heart-pounding motion picture experience. They get too much credit for a win and take too much blame for a loss. But such is the lot of an NFL quarterback. More than anyone else, he shapes the character of a game and has the biggest effect on its outcome. So you can imagine that when these intrepid signal callers foul up, it can set off a chain reaction of wild and sometimes comical events. Unlike the relatively anonymous lineman, the quarterback has no place to hide. His mistakes are there for all the world to see. The quarterback is a varied style of man. Some are young mod gods with whips and cannons for arms. They survive on instinct. Others are older, slower, wiser, and they survive by their aged experience and sagacious wisdom. But young or old, they stand on common ground in the center ring. They are glamorized and immortalized. They are the trend weavers, the style setters. For the ones who have proven themselves, the merest appearance inspires respect from all who watch them pass. They are adored by the fans who live to merely touch the hem of their jerseys. They are revered and honored by their teammates. When the general takes the field, everyone knows it's his game, and he's in charge right from the moment of the opening snap. Quarterback's ball handling is nothing short of phenomenal. Pure wizardry. It's in the huddle that he becomes true master. Each play plotted in concise patterns. Every soldier knowing his exact assignment. Quarterback's mind and body work as one, flawless in their perfection. His hands are flashing quick nimbleness. His legs are smoothly pumping precision pistons.
but his overriding talent is his superb rapport with his receivers. They're timing a 19-jewel Swiss movement. The great quarterbacks will always hit the open man. Under pressure, their accuracy is uncanny. Most signal callers have developed a poised, relaxed throwing style. When the quarterback drops back, there is always the threat of an instant score. However, not everyone is enamored with these courageous field generals. There are some players who are not his friends, and he tries to fool these miscreants with a vast repertoire of arcane tricks, such as drawing them off sides. Sometimes the baddies resent it. And sooner or later, the general finds that he'll have to learn to live with an occasional nudge or two. Weather is another enemy with which our hero easily copes. Perhaps the greatest asset of any quarterback is that no matter what the situation, he manages to survive with his dignity unruffled. He doesn't get hung up on little things. As team leader, he must know when to let up. He must know the precise moment when to give his mates time to relax. It is in his psyche to know when to use the forward pass and when to go with something a little trickier. He must know when to use the curl pattern and when to go to the post. The quarterback, the man who keeps the machine moving. Ever alert, the man who provides excitement, dazzle, sunburst to the game. He keeps the fan on the edge of his seat. For he is truly... Lousy. For he is truly Sunday's glorious general. So far, you've seen how we take creative liberties with some of the footage we've shot during the last 20 years. But our next segment proves the old adage that truth is stranger than fiction. It's the bizarre story of the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we didn't have to make any of it up. All we had to do was let our cameras roll. In fact, when the Bucks were born in 1976, they actually seemed to be rehearsing for one of our Follies films. <laughs> The birth of the Bucks was sort of like the birth of Rosemary's baby. The creature was hideous, but you couldn't turn your eyes away from it. The Bucks displayed a monstrous penchant for losing, and over a three-year span, they made NFL history by dropping 26 consecutive games. While the Bucks supplied the belly laughs, head coach John McKay provided the quips. He prowled and scowled on the sidelines like Don Rickles, delivering a monologue to the stage-side tables at a Vegas nightclub. 
You can't stop a pass or a run. Otherwise, we're in great shape. Hey, what's you? What's wrong with playing Mon in the game? Uh, he tackles. Huh? We got all these old pros. Nobody tackles. Gentlemen, are you going to put your big man in or are you going to stand here? We're trying to get the ball to keep it about a week. How the hell are you going to get him out the back? Well, these guys are almost gutless. And the ones that aren't that are brainless. We got, uh, had to scramble out of there quite a bit, a lot of sacks. Uh, well, we didn't block him. But we made up for it by not tackling. McKay's Bucks resembled a fraternity football team well into their third keg of beer. And their style of play resembled outtakes from Animal House. What we needed was Newt Rockney, and he was not here. We will attempt to come back next Sunday in Tampa Stadium in front of our own crowd. We've now proven we can't play on the road or in front of our own crowd. So we, we, we would like to have a neutral site. We went through eight quarterbacks. Every time I looked up, uh, start that guy. Uh, we had no audible system because we had the left guard was from Nova Scotia and the right guard was from, we just picked up from Philadelphia. They barely knew each other's name. These pushovers in the pumpkin colored jerseys suffered a lot of early knockouts. But in 1979, a fairy tale transformation occurred. The Pumpkins turned into a fleet of golden coaches and won the NFC Central Division title. The Bucks had gone from worst to first, and they've been strong contenders ever since. Well, the reason I had a five-year plan, I had a five-year contract. See, I'd have had a six-year plan if I had a six-year contract or a three-year plan. And so now everybody says, well, how can McKay be so intelligent at five years? Well, that was the length of the contract. Uh, that's, that's how intelligent I am. While the Bucks eventually wore the look of a winner, the New Orleans Saints have consistently displayed a game face not even a mother could love. These NFL sad sacks took their first baby steps in 1968, and it looked like they would grow up in a hurry when John Gilliam, number 42, took the opening kickoff in their first game and went 94 yards for a touchdown. But while the Saints' opening number was up-tempo, they've been playing the blues ever since. The Saints often seem to be playing every quarter as if they had spent a long night in the French Quarter. And during the first 18 years of their existence, they have never had a winning season. Every year, the Saints have taken a crash course in the School of Hard Knocks. They're still waiting to graduate. Nearly 500 players have known the dizzying, disorienting experience of being a saint. And some strange birds have perched in the club locker room. Well, we picked up a punt returner. We were in bad need of one and, uh, from Oakland. And he came in on a Saturday. He had just been released. And we had a game that night, so they just took him straight to the Superdome. And uh, he didn't really have to learn any plays or anything, so he was going to catch punts that night. And he had a parrot on his shoulder when he came in and started meeting some of the guys. And it was a beautiful parrot. And um, it was a little peculiar. But he's supposed to be a good return man, so what? And uh, but I, I was just noticing, you know, I was wondering what he was going to do with that parrot during the game. And we have nice dressing facilities there and a nice kind of a um, little cubby up in our lockers in the dome. And he just put his parrot up there in the... Uh, in the locker, and uh, someone asked him, was it just going to leave there the whole game? He said, sure, he'll just sit there the whole game. Well, he dropped the first punt, and they never put him back in, so obviously uh, he was going to get the ax. Uh, it was a one-night stand in New Orleans. When we went back in the dressing room after the game was over, that parrot was dead in the, uh, in the locker up there, just, just laid out. One creature who has survived is Gumbo, the team's mascot. Saints fans are as loyal and trusting as Gumbo. They've maintained high hopes for a team with a flair for low comedy. The Saints may have never had a good team, but they've had some great rosters. Now, I don't mean in talent, but in names. Names like Jubilee Dunbar, D'Artagnan Martin, and Guido Merkins are among those who have played for eight different head coaches. The first coach was Hall of Fame receiver Tom Fears. 
Critics said he couldn't even blow his own nose. They were wrong. The New Orleans Saints have gone marching into 18 NFL campaigns, and they've never marched out as a winner. This is truly the ideal team for the city that gave birth to the Blues. The proud foot, I say the proud foot belongs to the kicker whose only concern when kicking is that his mates know who to block. I got 50. I got I 76. Got no, Joe, I got you got him. 45. Who's got no, 30? I got 40. I got him. I got that guy. Okay, all set. Hey, who's got 45? I thought you had 45. I've got 77. Who's got 48? I got, got 48. Oh, I got what 88. The time out. In kicking, the center snap, I say the center snap is crucial. Mm. And now, uh, pay attention. The ally of every kicker is his sure hand. I say he's sure handed holder. If something goes wrong, I say goes wrong, the kicker has some options. Pay attention, boy. There's the double trick kick run and kick real quick stick. Or there's the popular, I say popular strawberry short kick. When it, uh, pay attention, boy. When it comes to kicking, we punt, I say we punters display an affinity for ballet with our fluid movements that sing, I say sing of gracefulness. It's up to the punter to save, I say, to save his team from bad field position. Down through the years, kickers, and players at every other position for that matter, have been the unwitting victims in our Follies films. Two of the greatest causes of their embarrassment have been bad weather and the stadium surroundings themselves. In the Lord said, let there be precipitate, a precipitate, a precipitate, a precipitate, a precipitate, let there be rain. And lo and behold, rain came pouring down, turning all into a quagmire, a quagmire, into a quagmire, and making a real mess of things. And the player said, Lord, we're melancholy, uh, uh, we're pretty darn sad. And the Lord said, get thee some artifice, get thee some artifice, get thee, get thee, get thee, get thee a rug. And the players did, but when they, uh, they saw what they had they wrought, they said, Lord, we're melancholy, we're, 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 we're still pretty darn sad. So uh, if, uh, finally the Lord said, uh, get thee under the, the, the domes, costing uh, millions of dollars. And the, t t the taxpayers said, L -l -l Lord, we sure are melancholy, melanch uh, uh, Lord, uh, we've sure been given a, a, a big enough place to take a bath. Besides bad weather, fan and player alike are surrounded by constant dangers lurking in NFL stadiums. such collisions has frightened many a player. In fact, some have never been heard from again. And there are perils aplenty for halftime performers as well. Hey! 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 
Oh boy. Hai, hai, ho, sini kai puru. Hai! Hai! Oh, hurts. Usana kai ita kai, usana rekira, usana rekira, isikai! Hai! Hai! Oh, oh, hai, 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 unchukona karwachi. Oh, so arm. Usana rekira, isikai! Hai! Most football fans just can't seem to get enough of the game on television. But the teams only play once a week. So how do you satisfy the cravings of the dyed-in-the-wool fan? Uh, football soap opera? Nah. Maybe football game shows? Well, our budget was a little tight for all that. But we have come up with an NFL newscast. Now for all the late-breaking stories, here's the Believe It or Else Newswire. Incredible as it may seem, more and more creatures have been appearing at football games. Their union, the powerful AF of L, or Animal Federation of Labor, has enacted right-to-work laws that give them equal time on Sundays. But although their presence has had little impact on the game, they have made their mark in one significant area. Hey, let me see your feet. Uh, you're okay. Next. Okay, you're clean. Okay, okay, next. Okay, pro football fans, get ready for the incredible. Brace yourself for the preposterous, the unbelievable. <laughs> Be prepared to witness the unexpected. Ay caramba, my nose! Join us on a fascinating journey as we meet and observe the wild, weird, and wacky of the pro football world. see astounding sights that will shock and amaze as brought to you by our crew of award-winning cameramen yes it's time once again for pro, pro football believe, believe it, it or else believe it or else shocking as it may seem today's athlete may not be in shape Results from the recently released Braunschweiger report indicate subdued players with a more laid-back style. Big salaries may be swelling a few heads. Some players demand adulation for doing almost nothing. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And still others insist on chauffeured limo service to and from the locker room. Such data disturbed most NFL coaches, and so a bold and innovative fitness program was introduced around the league. The program applied principles from the world's foremost therapists. Modern dance fundamentals were also incorporated. And step and step and turn and step and open your toes, Kevin. Arch your back. The program also provided assistance for those who appeared troubled or confused. Some of the more unusual cases included an advanced state of schizophrenia. One man continued to play football even though the game had been over for three hours. Such problems were dealt with by enlisting the aid of counselors who listened attentively to each player. Finally, the effects of this daring approach began to materialize.
awfully decent of you, old chap. No one seemed particularly pleased with the results. Undaunted, the players are now trying a new training oh. method they feel certain will work. Believe it or else, player moonlights as halftime entertainer. Believe it or else, middle-aged stadium band conductor plans second career as football star. Believe it or else, referees, no longer content just to announce penalties over PA, Reveal they will open limited engagement at Copacabana next summer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, 98 bottles of beer on the wall, 98 bottles of beer on the wall. Indeed, the entertainment bug has really bit around the NFL, thanks in part to the hard-working cheerleaders who have earned so much acclaim. It is a glamorous life. Instant celebrity status, nationwide exposure, and a chance to mingle with the upper crust of society. But because it looks like so much fun, there are those who might think that anyone could be an NFL cheerleader. Nothing could be further from the truth. The girls must be willing to work in hostile climates, allow themselves to be lacquered for promotional tours, dance with season ticket holders at booster club outings, and occasionally date some of the homelier players. So to all who may be considering cheerleading as a lifelong occupation, take note. Despite the outer glamour, football cheerleading isn't for everyone. When Shakespeare wrote that all the world is a stage, he obviously wasn't thinking about the NFL. But when a stadium is filled with 80,000 screaming fans, we've discovered that more than a few head coaches become natural performers. We've put wireless microphones on some of the men who call the shots from the sidelines, and our next segment demonstrates that when the stadium clock starts ticking on game day, the effect can be something like the curtain going up on the stage show at the Improv or the Comedy Store. Game day in the NFL. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, huh? For every man who has ever coached, these next few hours of suffering and celebration are what make life worth living. Joy to the world. Joy. All right, everybody sit down. Now, let's everybody sit down. Stay up here with me, Louie. Back up, fellas, back up, please, so we can see. Is there any way that we can get these people to sit down? Hey, stay here and make it look like we know what the hell we're doing. Sit. Right, Watch the screen! Watch the reverse, son! Watch your fake, Peter! Nelson! Watch your fake! Watch your fake! Watch your pass! Watch your pass! Watch the play action pass! Watch your fake! Pass! Screen! Flea flicker! Watch your dog! Watch everything! I formation. I formation. Quick 141. I formation. Quick 141. 94. Fullback banana. Hot right. Brown left wide nasty. 16 lead pass. Post flag with a, to Gloucester. Brown left wide nasty. We might as well run it. Yep. Let's run to Bomaruski. Huh? Run to Bomaruski. Bomaruski. Tight line. What we got to run, I'm telling you, it sounds crazy is an 888 deep down the middle and hope we get a pass interference, don't you think? Would you please ask these people to stand back? Everybody, Robbie! Douglas! Douglas! Get up Beckman, there and make Beckman, him kick Beckman, it again. Beckman! No, not Jimbo, Beckman! Beckman! Get up there and make him kick it again. Or maybe it's on us, maybe it's on us. Boy, that, the gears in that guy's mind didn't mesh for a long time, I'll tell you that. Get him out of there, because he has no hands. 
Warren, you, you know on that 30, 39, you did a poor job. Hey, God, you can't do that. Hell, you're in your home state. No good at all. We want that up straight in the air. What the hell? We getting anybody can kick it out of bounds. That's I don't want you up there running around faking blitzes and getting out of position. You understand? Yes, sir. You line up where you're supposed to line up. None of that Harry High School fake this. Do what we're told. Oh, yeah. You got to tell these guys what to do every minute of the day. This is unbelievable. Yeah. If I don't get them down, I will cut them, baby, so they'll be down. Hey, line, we're going to have to start doing something now. We're going to have to start doing something. The defense is not going to do it, so let's start. What the hell's the matter with you guys? The alert! Come on, defense! Stop somebody once! I guarantee you next week you'll stay back because every guy up here is going to cost 500 Dollars. You all right, Butch? Coach! Butch! Butch, are you okay? Butch! Coach! Coach! Drop! Drop, dummy! Drop! My daughter could do better! My daughter could! You're chicken! And the next time everybody will sit in a bench or I'll run every to Green Bay. I knew we weren't ready to play football today. I knew we weren't ready to play football. Hey, pick up! Pick up! Pick up! Pick up! Pick up right there! Pick up, you picked him up! Holy, oh, pull his arm! Oh, he pulled his arm! He pulled his, he pulled him! Tack, do you see the offensive tackle? He literally tackled the strong safety. He tackled him for crying out loud. Open your eyes! I can't believe that! Mr. Official, let me ask you something. How can six of you miss a play like that, huh? What, oh, six of you. The ball that? jumped out of there as soon as we made contact. What, 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 I thought you were talking about you being on the field. No! What? Hey, can I tell you one thing? That's three holding penalties on one football team in a quarter and a half. That ain't funny. First down by two feet. Two feet. He's got it easy. He's got it easy. I can't see. Oh, the thing is way over here. He's got it by two feet. You did good. You did good. You marked it good. No, he's all right. First down. That's good. You marked it good. You marked it good. You did a hell of a job. Nice going. Great job. You marked it good. Now, see how your eyes a work? Foot, a you foot. said two feet. All right, well, what's the difference between oh, you? Eight inches. Two feet. Five and a half feet. Hey, eight eight inches. inches. Went to college with that official. Yeah, <laughs> well, I went to college. I did. I went to college with him, huh? Hey, Airman! Hey, you over-officious jerk! If they substitute people in, they've got to stay in. They cannot go back out. They've got to be in for one play. Even I know that. Now, you can't do that. If you do it, I'm telling you, you're going to have more hell over it than a little bit. Oh, there's a clip! Damn, there's a clip! What the hell's wrong with you, 76? Call a clip! You guys are horse out there! I tell you, you think that you've given these a little bit of an advantage now? How about turning it around? Oh, that is a crock! They're killing me, Why are they killing me! If you think for one damn minute I'm going to take a loss standing down, you just have another thought for coming. Ah, mouth at 20, you couldn't cover me. <laughs> Come on, baby, one time. One time. One time, baby. One time. One time! Come on, boy! Take it! Come on, boy! Take it! Take it! Come on, turn the car! Turn the car! Turn the car! Turn the car! Turn the car. a bullfrog. The basic formula for our Follies films is fairly simple. Take plenty of pratfalls and funny faces, then put them to script and music. But at the risk of sounding somewhat snobbish, we've also attempted to add a touch of class and culture to our basic formula. I'm about to attend a command performance of two classics of football film comedy the Headcracker Suite, and the High Mom Opera. It's Bach, Brahms, Beethoven, and bloopers.
up and down a cheetah. Hi, Mom. Number one, number one, number one. Look. Rest of a tag, a killer Hi, Mom. Number one, number one, number one. One. Before it's on a tea, see my pepper it up. La 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 Hi, Mom. 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 Hi,